Hey everyone, welcome back. I have a slight problem here. I've been working for hours trying to figure out my two new ESU analyzers. I've got a Fluke QAES3 and a Daytrend VPad RF. And believe it or not, you would think a new technology is easy, but they're not, not necessarily. And unless you do this every single day, these units are probably going to give you some issues. So let's take a look at our old technology versus the new ones. And I'll go over some of their benefits and their issues and some of their features. So guys, you might recognize, you might recognize this unit right here. This is the tried and true 454A. Look at that large, beautiful display. It's flickering a little bit in the camera, but it doesn't flicker in real life when you're looking at it. Very simple interface. You can see I got a load plus, load minus. And right here, this is your output watts. It's actually very simple. We go back to the main menu. You can see right here, output. This is your general output. RF leakage, ammeter, auxiliary. So you can also set it up to do auto test, which I've never done. Anyway, this unit has been the standard for a very long time. The only thing I dislike is I wish it had a handle right here instead of on the side. The top, the ports are active, dispersive, and power ground. Almost all your measurements are done with two banana plugs through here you can see I've got two wires that I made up and uh, this one here is going to be to your REM port right here and your active is going to go to your pen usually but that's it it was really just two connections and the rest all these other things are just features you don't necessarily need them it's got big, large, easy to, to read. It's at an angle, so you can read it while I'm sitting in a chair comfortably, like where I'm currently at. And this unit is the standard because it's simple. It has all the information where you need it, when you need it. And why would I replace this unit? Well, the only real reason that I need to replace this unit is because it didn't have an integral load for the newest ESUs. And I really wish all the new ESU analyzers had this. In order to get this guy to activate, you have to have a load of about 10 ohms to simulate a patient on the split lead. And I made up my own load. These are two five watt resistors and they're wired in parallel, which gave me the perfect load to make this guy function. And now we've got a chance to get some new test equipment. So I um, I wanted the new Fluke analyzer and they sent me the new Daytrend, which is this guy, this little brick, and it's got a tablet. See that? You might think, oh my gosh, that looks awesome. It's got a big, beautiful screen. Look at that, very easy to read. I'll give Daytrend this. This screen right here, a lot of this stuff makes sense. It really does. If you want to look at feature set, if you want to activate the unit, connect this to the back of your ESU and you go into some menus and you can get the unit to activate automatically. Unfortunately, their implementation is horrible. It's, it's really bad, guys. But if you come back here to the, the interface, you see this? See these little clips right here, right here? The springboard. That's where your tablet goes. So if you're going to store your tablet, you have to disconnect every single thing on this device and then put your tablet up there. That is such a pain. Let me tell you. Let's get a look at this guy. See this big, beautiful back plate? Wouldn't you think that that'd be a nice place for, I don't know, maybe tablet storage? Here's this. Let's go one step further. When you dock your tablet, 
let's make it charge with, I don't know, let's say one of those magnetic USB cables or something. But no, we're not gonna do that. We have this little delicate connection right here with a, a mini USB. Oh, and my tablet's gonna shut down. Uh, let's see, there we go. And this is one of the biggest problems with this entire unit. I have this tablet, it's powered by this little tiny USB up here, it's gonna get broke. Either this port's gonna get broke, that port's gonna get broke, that little uh, manufactured USB, they made this cable, you see this guy right here? They made that one, that proprietary cable, it is going to end up broken or missing, because look at, look at the diameter of it, it's tiny. So day trend, you guys, really drop the ball on this one. I think your interface up here is somewhat reasonable, although you could do a, a better explanation uh, with the color coordination. And during the test, you gotta move these jumpers around stuff. Complete pain in the ass. I really dislike it. Uh, but I have the same problem, if not worse, on the new Fluke. Look at all those wires. You see that? That is not even an over-exaggeration. I need all those wires connected just to do a simple monopolar output test. Are you going to memorize where all those connections go every single time if you do these like once a month, once every two months? I don't think so. So let's keep going with this guy over here, the VPAD RF. Now I can come in here and it does do a beautiful job of showing what to connect and where, right? And for the most part, this guy is the type of unit that I could send out with a Biomed one into the field and I can tell them, hey, go and do these units. Because if you walk through step-by-step -step with this guy, it'll take you through it with pictures. It's very cool. The problem is, is it's, it's cumbersome. It's got this stupid tablet. And I'm telling you, this tablet is absolutely ridiculous. It should have, honestly, a flip-up screen that pops up right here on the top to hell with the tablet pop up a screen and have an internal uh, mini computer that's Android based. And this would be the talk of the town. I'm telling you right now, it just needs a, a screen that pops up so I can see my settings while I'm working right here. This unit here would be my pick out of all the devices I've used lately, but they really mess it up. This tablet, as an example, when I booted this guy up just moments ago, cause it was unplugged, cause I keep it on a rolly cart. It was unplugged for a while, right? because it's a safety, it's an analyzer. I'm not gonna, it's not on a bench. I'm not gonna keep it plugged in all the time. So guess what happened? My tablet battery ran out. And because the tablet battery ran out, I had to sit here for five to 10 minutes waiting for this guy to get up to 5% charge just so it will turn on. It's complete garbage, guys. And look at this. They had to put a little sticker right here. It says hold until it vibrates for the power button. Because believe it or not, this guy here, you have to really depress this button really hard and hold it for like three or four seconds. And then you'll feel a little bzzz, and then it'll boot up. If it wasn't for that sticker, I can see a lot of people would ship this back because hey, it's not working, right? So this guy here, uh, it does have just a couple features that oh, it just drives me absolutely crazy. So I'm in the high frequency you can see I have to pop into this menu, I have to select what I'm gonna do, and then hit apply, and then I can do my test. Let's go into a manual mode. Let's do, so uh, let's go into auto sequences. It has a good selection of auto sequences where it takes you step by step through the PM of all these various devices. And that is excellent, except for the fact that a lot of the clickety clacks that you gotta do they have extra steps and some, some of the screens that you have to click off of are just for information like, hey, we're gonna do this test, we're gonna check this because it feels good to do this test. And you have to click on it and it's just one more click, it's one more slideshow that you have to go through. And let's say, uh, let's do, for example, the FT10. Okay, yes, yes, yes. Choose device. So this is all really good. It has good documentation. I'll give them that, no problem. You ready for the downside of this whole thing, guys? That's right. 
I'm on slide two of 240. 240 slides to do a PM on the on just a regular FT10. Now who's gonna do that? You're gonna you're gonna get what two maybe three units done before lunchtime. Now mind you, like I said, this would be perfect for a Biomed one. It would be perfect because I can give it to them. I can tell them to do auto sequence on these units. Just go and get it done. And sure, he's gonna go faster after like one or two tests. But the problem is you gotta go through 240 slides. That's absolutely ridiculous, guys. So I, I did one, it took me a couple hours to do one uh, auto sequence test once before. The problem with the auto sequence test is you're gonna have a, a configuration that's gonna tell you to do, and then you're gonna go to your unit and you're gonna have to configure it over here. And then you're gonna come over here and you're gonna reconfigure this whole entire unit and you're gonna do the next test on port one. And then you're gonna come over here, you're gonna reconfigure it again, then you're gonna do the next test on port one. You see what I'm saying? What they should do is you configure it in a particular way, you do your test on port one, then the device says, hey, switch it over to port two. So then all I gotta do is move these over to here, I don't have to reconfigure all this garbage, and then it does the exact same test on port two, and then it says, okay, next test. Now, reconfigure it, go back to port one, and then we test port one, and then it says, move it to port two, and then I would just have to move them over to port two, but that's not what it does. It has me configure it all for port one, do a next test, configure it, then the next test, configure it, and then it says, hey, let's go back to port two, and let's do the port two test, and then I have to switch it down there, and then I have to come up here and do the exact same configurations that I just did for port one. Oh, guys, who came up with that? I have to configure this, I have to configure that, configure this, configure that. Day trend, come on guys. Efficiency really isn't you guys' thing, and I get that. And this, while if you have the, the display here, you need this in order to get any sort of output. There's no display on the box at all. This guy will give you your outputs, and that's fantastic, but this is not that intuitive. So it's a good thing we have this screen down here. They did an excellent, uh, job walking you through with images of what configuration you're going to do here and you're going to do here But guys they do fall short a little bit here and there the rem test look at this is big It's beautiful. It makes sense. I Cannot say that about my other unit Let's go back to HF and let's take a look uh, internal load 300 ohms and let's do start test. Okay, here is my other huge gripe about this device. So if I wanna do, let's say cut or coag, you have to pop into here, do cut or coag, apply, and then you do foot switch on, beep, and then you hit that, and then you have to come back in here, you do cut, apply, beep, just more clickety clacks to make stuff happen. It should have like a button here that says activate cut, activate coag, you know, going into a menu and then hitting apply and then coming back here and then hitting something, then you go back into the foot switch and then you hit coag and then you hit apply and then you come over here. I should just have to like, let's say I hit cut activate, coag ac activate. I should activate the one based on the button I press, right? It's just complete garbage. I have like three or four button presses I gotta do just to get a reading. And then I have to go back in here Go to the next one, apply, activate it again. Ah, efficiency is not you guys' thing. Look at all these buttons, all this garbage down here. We don't need any of these buttons. I just need a big button that says activate cut, activate coag. Why do I have to go into a sub menu for that? And then right here, I have to pop back into the screen if I wanna change this, that's not so bad. Just a little cumbersome. Okay. But that is the VPAD RF. This guy, because I have the display here, I have a little bit more ability to go in and modify some stuff and get it up and going quicker. But let's go to the other new entry. I unboxed this guy a couple days ago. 
it took over two hours to figure out how to hook it up just to get an output. So this guy, Fluke, will use these connections up here just like on your pencil, whereas this guy has a designated foot switch output. So if you want to do the foot switch, you have extra jumpers, you have extra stuff. Look at all these connections, guys. The one good thing Fluke does is they include the 500 ohm or the, the 100 ohm or whatever. It includes the this guy, your resistor, to activate this guy. Because without it, I've got nothing. And mind you, it took me over an hour just today, plus two hours the other day to figure this guy out. And I wouldn't have figured it out at all. You think I'd go into the manual, right? And uh, you'd be able to look it up. There's only four, maybe five pages worth of information in the manual. And they don't even show hookups, none of that. They basically say this test does this, this test does this, this test does this. Doesn't explain to you what any of this garbage does whatsoever. I had to go on a YouTube video to which one YouTube video was wrong, made by somebody else. It was for a older model ESU. This one right here, in order to work with these guys, it has to be set up in a very particular manner. You, so you can see I've got the jumper set to here to here. I've got my load resistor right here across my uh, split pads. And my energy right here, coag and cut. And you would think, okay, I got that. So between these and these, right, it should be for bipolar. Maybe, yes, no. It's not even very intuitive because according to the YouTube videos I've seen for bipolar, you have to connect bipolar across these two right here and then you have a whole nother connection that goes from here to here. And then you have one that comes over here to the little pin. What the heck is going on, guys? But anyway, if you come back to the display, let's just talk about the display. Look at this guy. That is the new display. This is 2020, guys. This is what, uh, two inches tall by, I don't know, five inches wide, something like that, two by five. It's 2020, and we're still using 1980s, 1990s technology. Look at this. It's a segmented display. A segmented display. Look at what their competition's using. Let's take a look at the old display. Look at this one. This is a lit, lit dot matrix. I guess you could call that a dot matrix. It's lit with a back, black background. Look at this one. Light background, dark lettering. The contrast isn't too great. If you take a look right here, this is the real number that I give it a, a darned about. I'm, I'm so upset about this that I'm, I'm almost using profanity. I'm sorry, guys. You can see right here, power, 283 watts. Look at this one. Look at this big, beautiful readout. Watts. Load minus, load plus. I can do my stuff really quickly through this guy versus this one over here. I have to come over here and I have to rotate my load. I can select the delay, which is kind of cool. But my, my output power, it's tiny. Why wouldn't they increase? Look at all the real estate they have above it. Uh, given this is only like two inches tall, they could have made this font right here a little bit larger, make it more prominent. But that is Spartan at best. And here's the best part about it. You see how I've got these little tiny legs sitting up? If you increase your viewing angle just a little bit. Now the camera's picking it up way better than the eyeball does. It has extreme washout. Like I, it's almost illegible right here. I, I can't really read it. Although the camera shows that you can. It's all because it's a garbage display. You've got soft buttons down at the bottom. That's fine. Guess what it's missing on the front panel? A power button. In order to get the power, I have to reach way back here. And mind you, this is a really long unit. I have to reach back here above the power cord and then flip the power switch. It should be kind of like this. Have a soft power button on the front. Hard power button on the back, soft power button on the front. Or let's say you put AC mains hard power button on the front. God forbid, right? Look at that exposed port. It's not like anything, any garbage is going to get in there, right? So that's it. Um, you can see right here CQM. That's the fancy new thing for REM or patient return. It's None of this is very intuitive. I'm, I'm actually very upset about this unit. 
The manual is absolutely useless. It does come with some good lead sets. Um, I have I have some of them sitting down here in a drawer, but like I said, I've been working for three hours just to get good readings on it. And if I didn't have uh, YouTube, I wouldn't know how to hook it up as it is. I was getting the wrong readings with some of the stuff that I had hooked up. Finally, I went to YouTube and I looked it up and you're supposed to leave this guy one end dingle hopper in, in space while the other two sides are connected. You're supposed to put a jumper on here because if you don't, then you're not going to get the foot, foot switch uh, activation. These guys at least get it right. Look at this. They have cut and quag as a soft switch. One button right on the front. Those guys couldn't figure that out and that really upsets me. You can do start continuous or start single. I have it set for two seconds and then it kicks out and gives me my wattage, which it didn't because why would it? So guys, that is the Fluke. I'm, I'm not very happy with it at all. It's a very expensive unit and this right here reminds me of the 1990s to which the 1990s design is actually better it's better in almost every single way. If this guy had Bluetooth and interfaced with an app, I would take this a hundred times over that over there. And I would take it over this one because this tablet that's gonna fall, get broken, this port's gonna get ripped out. That should be a display that's affixed and it pops up. This guy's got a garbage display. It does have answer software and I can interface it with a laptop or something. But that's just one more thing to take out in the field. And this is huge. This one here is a suitcase brick. This guy's huge, but at least this guy right here is simple and I can pack all my leads in here and I can be out in the field with it. This guy here, could you imagine popping the tablet off every single time you want to use it, connecting your leads in whatever particular pattern it tells you to, and then, you know, you're good to go. There's not even a bag attached to it. Look at this. What is that? These, these guys here at least had a bag attached to it. This one here, the leads, yeah, I've got a bag. I had to come up with one, but it, it I'll give them this. Dyn Daytrend, they had an excellent selection of leads that came with the unit. I will give them that. Excellent selection of leads. These guys had uh, good leads that came with the unit. It's just, what I'm probably gonna have to do is I'm gonna take them and I'm gonna bundle these leads together like this for monopolar. I'm gonna probably get a put a zip tie on it. So I know that all these leads go together. I'm probably gonna put a zip tie right here so that I know that these ones all go together in order to do one output. But that's it guys, I, I would go into more detail but right now I'm, I'm really upset about these two units. Neither one is as intuitive as I'd like. This one here, they could do it way better. This tablet idea, whoever came up with that should be fired. And that's my opinion, this, this is such a bad idea. These are rugged devices we use in the field. They have to be quick to deploy. And sometimes you don't have a tabletop to use it. Sometimes like we have to set up shop with whatever flat space we got. And this guy is gonna fall, it's gonna break. It's just, I expect that guy to have problems. This guy is more durable, it's built better, it's protected by the handles. No power button on the front, of course not. Why would there be? The leads. Oh, don't even get me started, guys. Not intuitive. The manual is garbage. Well, guys, as you can tell, I am not happy about these. And you might be thinking, oh, you're just being fussy, whatever. Well, I invite you to sit down with one of these units and try and whip out a couple PMs rather quickly. Because it's not going to be as quick as you think. And if it came between using this guy and the new ones, I'd go with the old one. I think, uh, actually, I'm, I'm planning on taking these guys out today and whipping out some PMs. And I'll tell you right now, I'm thinking about using the old one right now. So, guys, that's your warning. Uh, the Daytrend V-Pad and the Fluke QAES3. If it was up to me, I would go with the 454A. And I would take that one in the field with me in a heartbeat. So, that's just my opinion. It is what it is. You guys have a good day.